What's up guys, Derek, moreplacemoreneast.com. Today we're gonna be talking about Gorilla Mode STEM. So this is a um, highly anticipated product launch. And to be honest, this product is pretty much for the STEM heads or those just looking for energy. Um, with that being said though, it's not going to be DMAA, crush your head through the wall, I wanna fucking murder someone type of a product. It is basically mode on steroids a little bit. I don't know how to explain it. It's more just like a more intense version of mode without the pump or the nitric oxide precursors. So it's, um, I'm going to say pump, I mean, you know, like the glycerol, the NO precursors, etc. not just, you know, the NO and the pump are intertwined, but those weren't the only things that caused the pump in that product. But anyways, the mental components of that product is essentially what this is, but maxed out to the highest degree I can max it out without it being in danger zone, in my opinion. So the tyrosine in it is through the roof. The Kana has doubled. The N-phenethyl dimethylamine citrate is increased. The caffeine is increased, um, but it's the same kind of mental cognitive blend that was that is currently in gorilla mode so this is basically going to serve as like honestly we're probably going to rebrand it and make it like an energy formula just because it's more uh universally i don't know welcomed in an energy format rather than just have it like precisely for pre-workout purposes so as a pre-workout honestly you could just get away with using more gorilla mode if you wanted to boost the dose up um, but if you're looking for a mental edge and Gorilla Mind Rush isn't, I don't know, is too intense for you or you just like the mental component. Some people like the, the mental component from Gorilla Mode and Gorilla Mind Rush are different. Gorilla Mind Rush is more like laser focus productivity, whereas Gorilla Mode is more like, I don't know, euphoric, more, uh, I don't know, creative it's kind of hard to explain the difference on camera. Honestly, you'd be better off just trying it yourself and say, seeing the difference for yourself. And when I say that, I'm not just trying to entice you to get them. Like you can literally email us back if you don't like it and get a full refund. Like it doesn't matter to us. So Gorilla Mode STEM, it's essentially just the mental component of Gorilla Mode. And I'm going to delve into exactly what that is. So the ingredient profile is consisting of L-tyrosine, 3000 milligrams. So in Gorilla Mode, the full, Daily dose is 1500, so keep that in mind, it's double the dose. Kana, Skeletium tor Tortuosum. So in Gorilla Mode, we have 500 milligrams. In Gorilla Mode Stem, we have 1000, which is definitely something you want to taper up to. You don't want to go to that off the bat. You want to go with a newbie dose, at least half a scoop to one scoop, at the most to start out, because Kana is something that, um, it's a bit more unpredictable how you're going to respond to it. So I would not jump right to the one gram dose of it off the bat, but it is a great ingredient and I'll delve into it in a sec here. As far as the other ingredients, we have the caffeine anhydrous, obviously at 375 milligrams, which is a really big dose. So, you know, when people talk about Gorilla Mode and anytime I see somebody comment that and this is like few and far between but this does happen here and there you see somebody comment it's too weak in a stimulant context and i can't help but like shake my head and think dude like how fucked is your brain that you actually can't respond at all to 350 milligrams caffeine 350 milligrams of n-phenethyl dimethylamine citrate 1500 milligrams of l-tyrosine 500 milligrams of kana huperazine a like if somebody doesn't feel that, like that should be a red flag that something's wrong with your head is like how I see it. So even for the most abusive of stim junkies, Gorilla Mind Rush is typically going to be uh, enough for them to get more than whatever they would even get from something prescription, to be honest. But with Gorilla Mode, it's a bit more of a mainstream formula that is designed to be... Um, I don't know, not overwhelmingly stimulating pre-workout. Like honestly, it has a bit of a cleaner. No, that's not true. They're both very clean, but it's more of a, uh, um, I can't even put my finger on the description to outline how it's different, to be honest. It's more euphoric. It's more mood elevating to some extent. It's more, um, it's different. 
I can't, you, you're gonna have to try yourself. Like there's way more L-tyrosine in it. There's a lot of things that are um, set it apart from Rush. Rush is the laser focused productivity, motivation, fucking knock shit out, get shit done supplement um, with all the nootropics in it. And then this is a pure energy formula that can elevate your mood at the same time. So as far as also the uh, bio pairing is in there as well. All right, did I already mention N-phenethyl dimethylamine citrates at 375 milligrams instead of 350. Um, and then bio pairing, um, 10 milligrams and who pairs in a at 400 micrograms. So this formula is very similar. Obviously it's just a bit more enhanced in the mental component and no, uh, you know, NO precursors, pump products, etc. Reason being, it's going to be at a much more attractive price point for people who just want, like some people just use pre-workout for the mental component and don't even care about the performance. So they might wanna get a cheaper version, which is understandable and this will be great for them. And then on top of that, those who want something to sip on while gaming, while studying, while whatever, and want an energy formula that isn't pills, they can sip on Gorilla Mode Stim and get a very top of class uh, energy formula. So to uh, think of some of the stuff that's on the industry, G Fuel is something that comes to mind. This is something that puts that product in the dust, like with ease. So those kind of products, what kind of audience they serve, this is the kind of product that I think can come in and disrupt that area, which I think it will in the future and is the ideal goal for it. As far as um, flavor and mixability, like there's barely any powder because it's all just the mental um, stimulants, the uh, nootropics that were in uh, Gorilla Mode. So, you know, the tub is like half the size as a normal Gorilla Mode tub. Um, the scoop is also is like one fourth the size or something. So um, it mixes fine. The flavor is great. You don't have to really worry about greeniness like you do with Gorilla Mode or Gorilla Mode Nitric because there's not 10 grams of fucking citrulline in it or, you know, four grams of glycer pump or anything crazy like that. So you're consuming a very small amount of powder. So it's very easy to handle. As far as the effect of the ingredients in particular, we're going to go start to finish. We're going to start with L-tyrosine at 3000 milligrams. So this is in my opinion, a very, very potent cognitive enhancing amino acid that acts by balancing neurotransmitter levels in the brain and its primary role is as a direct precursor to thyroxin and to the neurotransmitters dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine. So L-tyrosine shines in its ability to improve mental sharpness, focus energy levels, and cause mood elevation. And especially at this three gram dose, the mood elevation is substantial. And that was the the goal is to really crank dopamine up with this stuff. Um, as far as how it stacks up to N-acetyl-L-tyrosine, so N-acetyl-L-tyrosine is still used in the supplement industry, interestingly enough, even though L-tyrosine is the most bioavailable form of tyrosine. And in short, N-acetyl-L-tyrosine is very inefficiently converted in the body to tyrosine. And this has shown clinically that even IVing this stuff can't elevate plasma tyrosine levels to a significant degree, let alone via oral ingestion. So, you know, like claims of increased water solubility, anything like that, it's all marketing hype in my opinion, and it was disproved easily just by showing how poorly N-acetyl L-tyrosine is at converting to tyrosine in the body. If you can look at this chart here, the graph above depicts arterial concentrations of N-acetyl L-tyrosine and tyrosine during intravenous infusion of N-acetyl L-tyrosine. And as you can see, tyrosine levels barely budge. So like this is the same kind of tactic used to try and market new and improved forms of, uh, you know, like different amino acids or creatines or, you know, stuff that at the end of the day doesn't yield any additional benefit, it, but just has an inflated price tag. And in the case of L-tyrosine, the N-acetyl L-tyrosine just doesn't fucking work, it seems like. Even when you straight up mainline it into your vein, <laughs> it doesn't do anything. I've made sure that all of our products containing L-tyrosine contain straight L-tyrosine, since I found this data myself. Now moving on to Kana, Skeletium Tortuosum. So a thousand milligrams is a very, very high dose. And I've had a fair bit of experience with it at this point, especially through uh, Gorilla Mode. We've had it on the market for almost, I don't know, maybe like three quarters of a year now. And it's uh, performed extremely well. And it's very, uh, been welcomed with open arms by the community at large. And I think it is going to start being utilized by a lot of other companies in the future 
now that they're realizing that people really like it. So basically what it does, it's been found to effectively lower stress, elevate mood and increase focus. So I noticed it was a good cognitive aid and I felt like it would be a good thing to add to our pre-workout, which is why it was put in original gorilla mode. And it's not, it's not the same thing as Kratom, even though it's sold uh, by a lot of Kratom companies and it's kind of lumped into the same category by a lot of people. But how it works, it's mainly by increasing the amount of serotonin available in the brain and is typically used for its anxiety and mood elevating effects and it does a very good job of this. As far as the dosage, so anecdotally, a dose between 200 to 500 milligrams is ideal for oral ingestion in a drink and higher dosages between 1.5 to 2 grams ish have been associated with un unwanted side effects like dizziness. Some people get this exceeding the one gram dose. You really start to get into this territory of kind of like oddball side effects. So one gram is really pushing it on this ingredient. And frankly, this is why it's reserved for the max dose of our most maxed out energy formula for pre-workout use essentially. So when I say maxed out, I don't mean it stacks up to Gorilla Mine Rush in the same way that Gorilla Mine Rush is leveraged, but just as far as sheer mega dose of the cognitive enhancing ingredients found in our staple pre-workout Gorilla Mode, this is the most maxed out version of that stimulant blend in particular. So Kana has no addictive properties. It's not hallucinogenic. One thing to keep in mind though, is it has a high affinity for the serotonin transporter. So it's plausible that Kana can interfere with SSRI pharmaceuticals. So if you are somebody who's using those, I advise you steer clear of this product. Now moving on to caffeine, we have 375 milligrams. So obviously the most well-known central nervous system stimulant on earth and aside from the obvious you know cognitive benefits of caffeine it's also been shown to increase power output and training volume as well as lower fatigue so there was one study done assessing how much can caffeine increase workload even when sleep deprived and in this double blind crossover study 16 professional rugby players ingested either a placebo or four milligrams per kilogram of caffeine one hour before exercise the effects of caffeine were assessed on well slept and by well slept, it's eight hours or more, and sleep deprived athletes who had six hours or less. And athletes were asked to perform as many bench press, squat, and bent over row reps as they could possibly do um, each set without failure. And sleep deprivation produced a very large decrease in total load in the placebo group, but caffeine ingestion in the sleep deprived group was able to completely offset the loss of performance. So caffeine also resulted in a moderate increase in total load in the well slept group. So, and notably as well, testosterone response to exercise increased with caffeine uh, compared with placebo. So obviously the effect caffeine had completely attenuated the sleep induced performance loss that would have otherwise occurred. Now, is that an excuse to have a shitty sleep? No, it's not. But as you can see, even if you have a good sleep, it still enhances your performance above and beyond that as well. I'm um, another study, caffeine increases energy expenditure, calories burned per day. Single dose oral administration of 100 milligrams of caffeine increased the resting metabolic rate of both lean and post obese human volunteers by three to 4% over 150 minutes. Repeated caffeine administration of 100 milligrams every two hours over a 12 hour span, increased energy expenditure of both subject groups by eight to 11%, which is pretty substantial. The net effect was a significant increase in daily energy expenditure of 150 calories in lean volunteers and 79 calories in post obese subjects. Commonly consumed doses of caffeine can have a significant effect on energy balance as well as staying lean. So obviously there's a, you know, an appetite suppression effect as well as an energy enhancing effect and, um, you know, indirectly, it kind of helps burn fat too and get you leaner. Now, as far as the caffeine dosage that is most effective, so in general, healthy adults can safely consume up to 400 milligrams per day. Um, that doesn't mean you need that high. We have 375 in the product. We didn't want to push it to 400 because that's right on the edge of a danger zone there. But, um, you know, like use caffeine as needed relative to your individual tolerance for some starting as low as half a scoop of Gorilla Mode Stim uh, maybe more than enough to achieve uh, topped out cognitive stimulation without getting jitters and, you know, other caffeine induced side effects. So, and for those with, you know, much higher tolerance and need that kick using the two scoop 375 milligram dose should be sufficient. And if that isn't enough for you to feel at work, 
you know, you probably need to cycle off stimulants and do a clean out at that point, to be honest. Next ingredient is N-phenethyl dimethylamine citrate at 375 milligrams. So PEA phenylethylamine is known as the love drug in the brain and PEA increases the release of serotonin, adrenaline, dopamine, and norepinephrine. These neurotransmitters can significantly impact cognitive function, state of well-being, energy levels, and overall mood. And PEA is called the love drug because it promotes the same feelings of infatuation experienced during the early phases of love and exhilarating things like skydiving, certain psychoactive drugs, and eating large amounts of chocolate apparently <laughs> also significantly increase PEA levels. The problem with PEA as far as oral bioavailability goes and whatnot and the use in supplements is it has a half-life about of about five to 10 minutes, which is obviously nearly useless. And this is because monoamine oxidase MAO quickly breaks it down. So MAO is an enzyme in the body that breaks down PEA, dopamine, as well as other neurotransmitters. So this is why when you see, uh, you know, like P like straight PEA compare uh, containing products, you'll often find the PEA paired with something like hordenine, which can act as a MAO inhibitor. And by using MAO inhibitors like hordenine with PEA, you can effectively prevent MAO from breaking down PEA as quickly, consequently allowing PEA to exert its full effects in the body and significantly increasing its active life. So when I was designing Gorilla Mode originally, I wanted to go in another direction than PEA and hordenine, um, mainly because I didn't want to introduce a fat dose of hordenine into the supplement just to have it work. And frankly, PEA plus hordenine while it is good, it doesn't hit as hard as I would like for a pre-workout ingredient. So it's too subtle in my opinion. So that's why I decided to include a very high dose of N-phenethyl dimethylamine citrate instead. And this mimics the actions of adrenaline, noradrenaline, dopamine, and serotonin and keeps levels elevated throughout the duration of a full workout rather than PEA in and out of your system super quick. And then you have to combine it with hordenine and Frankly, the effects are kind of, uh, they're too smooth and subtle in my opinion. You don't get, you don't get any kind of like oomph from it. You just get like strong euphoria. Now the reason why N-phenethyl dimethylamine citrate lasts for a full workout and lasts so much longer in PEA is because it has two methyl groups connected to the nitrogen in the molecule, which acts as a safeguard to prevent it from being broken down by monoamine oxidase as quickly as PEA and it doesn't require an MAO inhibitor to be used as an adjunct alongside it either to make it last for the full workout. So if you look at this here, you can see the chemical structure of phenylethylamine, PEA. And you can see the chemical structure here, the nitrogen atom in the PEA molecule is known as the amine and it needs to be protected from MAO in order to prolong its effects in the brain. And as you can see, there's nothing attached to the nitrogen atom to prevent it from being cleaved by the MAO enzyme with PEA. So this, however, is the chemical structure of N-phenethyl dimethylamine citrate. And as you can see here, the two methyl groups attached to the nitrogen atom prevent MAO from cleaving the amine as quickly, consequently increasing the duration of its cognitive enhancing effects for the majority of your workout. And in conjunction with the 375 milligrams of caffeine, the high dose of N-phenethyl dimethylamine citrate in this formula can significantly increase focus, intensity, energy levels, and overall performance. And this is a very, very clean and still very strong energy stack in my opinion. Now moving on to bioparine at 10 milligrams. So this is a trademarked form of black pepper extract standardized to 95% piperine. Um, it's very effective. CYP3A4 and P glycoprotein inhibitor. And these enzymes break down molecules like caffeine and noradrenaline in the body. So by prolonging the breakdown of the cognitive enhancing ingredients in the formula, bioparine extends how long they work for. It can also significantly increase their bioavailability. So they basically, basically I include bioparine in this formula as well as Gorilla Mode uh, Classic to make the stimulants hit harder and last longer in the formulas. And in addition, bioparine inherently has its own monoamine oxidase um, inhibiting properties, thus further potentiating the effects of the N-phenethyl dimethylamine citrate in the formula. Now, finally, huperazine A, 400 micrograms, um, it works by inhibiting acetylcholinesterase in the brain, which is an enzyme that breaks down the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is not only a major regulator of cognitive performance, but it's also a 
important neurotransmitter needed for optimal muscular contractions during exercise. Cuparazine A has shown to promote neurogenesis, the birth of new neurons in the brain, and act as a neuroprotective agent um, for existing neurons in the brain. And in turn, Cuparazine A has been shown to enhance uh, memory, focus, cognitive function, and an array of other things that are uh, all synergistic with the other ingredients in this formula. And honestly, it's one of the most potent nootropics that you can actually feel when you use it, and it complements the um, stimulants and nootropics in this formula perfectly, in my opinion. So should you ever cycle off of this product, um, I advise you cycle off of everything you're using for at least five to seven days per month, regardless if you're on Gorilla Mode, Gorilla Mind Rush, Gorilla Mind Smooth. The Gorilla Mind Smooth has no stimulants at all. Um, even Gorilla Mode Nitric, I would advise everyone cycle off of whatever you're using for at least five to seven days a month. Now, how would you combine Gorilla Mode Stim with uh, Gorilla Mode? You wouldn't because they have the exact same stimulant complex inside of them. So you wouldn't combine the two or else you'd be ODing on stimulants. If you want to combine Gorilla Mode Stim with Gorilla Mode Nitric though, you could definitely do that. And you could do two scoops of each still if you really wanted to because Gorilla Mode Nitric has no stimulants. If you want to combine Gorilla Mode Stim with Gorilla Mind Smooth, you could still do the full dose of each as well because there's no stimulants in either of them, even though you're, you're going to be getting a fucking shit ton of L-tyrosine as well as Kana. So... Keep that in mind. That is, um, you're gonna be really pushing yourself into high dosage territory if you combine those products. Combining Rush, Gorilla Mind Rush with Gorilla Mode Stim, not advisable unless you are very aware of how to stack these stimulants on top of one another without pushing over your limits. Like for example, if you use, um, like for all intents and purposes, I would say that two scoops of Gorilla Mode Stim, that's the max dose you should be taking per day. If you take that, you might as well, you know, put Gorilla Mind Rush off the table in terms of even being available to take it because two scoops or six caps of Rush, either or puts you right at the ceiling threshold for where I would say you're at too much, you're using too many stimulants. Like that is the highest dose I would recommend. Above and beyond that, anything above and beyond that is a bit overkill in my opinion. So I would never say, you know, using if you're using two scoops of Gorilla Mode Stim, I would never say stack any rush on top of that. However, if you were using, let's just say one scoop of Gorilla Mode Stim, that's only half of the full dose of a daily dose. So at that point, you know, you have this uh, disparity where you have your ceiling up here of two scoops and you're using one, you obviously have like this much leeway of room for more stimulants. So at that point you could use theoretically, you know, three capsules of rush if you really could handle that much and you needed it. So just make sure your total daily dose doesn't ever exceed the amount of stimulants in two scoops of stim or six capsules of rush, regardless of how you want to combine them. If you want to do, you know, one and a half scoops of stim and like one to two capsules of rush or four capsules, four to five capsules of rush and like half of one scoop of stim, like however you want to combine them that you get the best effect out of, you can do that. Just be aware that you don't want to cumulatively exceed the maximum threshold. And to calculate what that is exactly, I would just use the caffeine amount. So obviously we have uh, about the same amount of caffeine in both formulas. We are pushing, um, I believe it was 325 milligrams of Gorilla Mind Rush for six capsules and we're at 375 mil. I mean, let me double check that actually. Uh, okay, so this is Gorilla Mind Rush. We have, yeah, 162.5 milligrams total caffeine per three capsules. So per six, 325, that's what I thought. Then we have 375 in stem. So like I said, 400 milligrams is kind of like the threshold of caffeine for a daily for a person, and that's without factoring in any other stimulants. Keep that in mind, that's just a threshold for caffeine on its own. So, you know, you have to use your judgment, do the math a bit on that, but like, for example, if I wanted to use one scoop of stem, the max dose of rush that I would take would be three caps, and that would be like my high-end ceiling, for example. So, one thing I should mention too, is if you wanna get the best effect out of these products, like anything mental clarity or mental uh, focus related, um, empty stomach, it's always way better. Like the difference of having stimulants on an empty stomach versus a full stomach, it's like night and day. It's not even like the same product. So if you, you know, find that something is too weak for you, um, just try it on an empty stomach when you wake up, when you're, I guess, technically you're sort of fasted. So 
Um, and it, it almost like completely transforms the way the product hits or just make sure you're on a relatively empty stomach when you take it. Cause having a giant, you know, like meal right before taking stimulants, like it can make me not even feel the stimulants versus if I was on an empty stomach, I could take half the dose and be flying. So <laughs> keep that in mind. So what can you really expect from it? Um, honestly, significant cognitive enhancement, improvement, um, focus, productivity, mental clarity, creativity, euphoria to some extent, but mostly just energy. Like this is an energy formula. That's what it's gonna be branded as moving forward. It is a good pre-workout if you don't want all the extra stuff that comes from Gorilla Mode or Gorilla Mode Nitric as far as, you know, all the expensive performance enhancing ingredients like the glycerol, the creatine monohydrate, the citrulline, the nitrosogene, the agmatine sulfate, all that good stuff if you just want the straight mental component maxed out from Gorilla Mode, that's what you're getting from this. And it's at a much more uh, cost-effective price point because we don't have to, you know, there's none of these super expensive performance enhancers in here. And when I say performance enhancers, I mean physically in terms of things that increase your endurance, things that increase intramuscular pump, intracellular hyperhydration, nitric oxide levels, that kind of stuff, rather than just straight, you know, cognitive enhancing effects. So. Um, if you're interested in it, you can check it out. It is now live and this has been, uh, you know, thank you guys for your patience who've been uh, waiting for the drop. Um, it's been a while, but it is here and I'm actually uh, really happy with how it turned out and the flavor is great. Um, the product mix as well. The effects are spot on as you would expect because it's basically just a stronger version of mode. So I think you guys are going to like it. So check it out if you want to uh, support the brand regardless if it's more plates, more dates or Gorilla Mind, everything is, it's all kind of like intertwined with one another. So everything is very much appreciated. So thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplates underscore more dates. Facebook, Snapchat, Pitchu, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, check out Gorilla Mode STEM, the new drop, or any of the other products we have, Gorilla Mode. Um, obviously, straight up, go pull out your pre-workout from your cabinet right now. Look at the label, look at the label on Gorilla Mode, look at the label on Gorilla Mode Nitric, look at the label on Gorilla Mode Stem. You'll see pretty clearly, in my opinion, it's very, very transparent why our formulas are top of the industry. Like I just did this big explanation in this video, <laughs> but typically I think the products speak for themselves, to be honest, when you actually just look at the labels and compare it to whatever you've been using. Um, these products, you know, speak for themselves with their formula. So, and I'm uh, very happy with how they all came out. I formulate these myself um, on a Word document. Like we don't have a private label manufacturer tell us what, you know, their like turnkey pre-workout formula is that they just slap a, you know, a label on and then say it's yours. That's what a lot of companies do. They'll just get their manufacturer to recommend what has the best margins, what is the, uh, you know, the best thing they can get for under $10 of manufacturing or something. Um, our, our product formulation does not occur like that at all. I literally sit on a Word document, write out exactly what I want. And then we pay more than we probably should um, for these products just based on the fact that our margins are, they suffer compared to another company because I want to make sure when we put out something that it is actually at the dosages and the synergy of ingredients that I would want to see in a product myself if I was a consumer buying it, or if I was mixing these ingredients myself in my kitchen, which is what I used to do before I had a company, I would literally get raw powders and mix them myself, weigh this shit out on a scale and make my own formulas with nootropics as well as pre-workouts. And now, like I th honestly, I don't really know any companies that are turnkey to the point where they're using like the max out dose. Like it's one thing to be clinical dose, the minimum dose that it produces an outcome in a clinical setting is the clinical dose, which is what a lot of these companies are saying with their six grams of citrulline malate, which is actually only four grams of pure L citrulline. And then we have like fucking 10 grams. Like that's the kind of stuff we're doing. So if you want to support it, check it out. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.